Bonjour. There we go. Greetings and welcome to the annual meeting of the National Association of County and City Health Officials. This conference serves as the largest gathering of health officials representing the 2,800 local health departments across the United States. I trust that you will find this year's annual meeting to be an informative, inspirational, and a rejuvenating experience as you network with colleagues and learn from experts in the field. I also think it's important to reflect on the national and international events of the last few weeks and recognize the instrumental role that NACHO can play by supporting you through these turbulent times. First of all, I would like to thank uh, my friend and colleague, Bob England, for being such a great and generous host for this year's conference. Bob and his team have contributed countless hours in serving as a local planning committee to welcome each and every one of you to the Grand Canyon State. As some of you know, Bob brings a great deal of energy to our membership, having served as a seasoned health officer and as an active member of the NATO board. So please join me with a thundering round of applause in thanking Dr. Bob England and, and members of his fantastic team at the Maricopa County Health Department. Thank you. In addition, I would like to take a brief moment to recognize the elected members of the NACHO Board of Directors for the 2016-2017 term. As some of you may know, NACHO is governed by a 27-member board comprised of health officials from around the country elected by their peers that include a mix of regional and at-large seats to provide the perspective of local health departments based on population size and geography. One seat includes a representative for tribal health departments, and the two ex officio members of our board represent the National Association of Counties, or NACO, and the U.S. Conference of Mayors. So, if you currently serve as a member of this esteemed body, or have served in this capacity in the past, please stand at this time so that we can acknowledge you and thank you for your tremendous service on behalf of our community of local health officials. Please stand. Members of the board. <laughs> past members of the board. All right, I see you. I know you. Thank you. I'd also like to thank members of NACHO's annual conference work group and the, the, the folks from conference managers for their tireless contributions to this year's planning efforts. In particular, I'd like to recognize Ruth Mayorana from the Maryland Association of Counties, who serves as the chair of this work group along with Maggie Pearson, director of events and business services. I would like to ask the members of the ACW and conference managers, please stand and be recognized by the audience as a small gesture of our appreciation of your work. Please stand. Thank you. Lastly, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of you as attendees for taking the time to plan, to support, and join us for this year's annual meeting. From board members to first-time attendees to our honored guests and awardees, you each contribute to this, this week's experience. Also like to thank NATO's Executive Director, Dr. Lamar Hasbrook, uh, Anne-Marie Burton, Senior Director of Member Relations, State Partnerships, Meetings and Events, along with the stellar staff at NATO for their incredible work with preparing for this three-day activity. Please join me in thanking them at this time. I'd like to acknowledge one individual who has been a quiet storm in his own right, and many of you know him, and, spend a, and send a special shout out to Richard Hofrichter for his years of overseeing the invaluable work on health equity and social justice at NACHO. He has authored numerous articles and books on this topic, and over the last 22 years, Richard has been instrumental with supporting the work of the Health Equity and Social Justice Committee, which is a voluntary body that helped to shepherd much of this work behind the scenes. Please join me in thanking Richard at this time. So I have the honor of serving as the Chief Public Health Officer at Cambridge Health Alliance for the City of Cambridge, Massachusetts. In this capacity, I lead a phenomenal team at a medium-sized local health department. Uh, we serve a jurisdiction of over 100,000 folks, and as I reflect on my public health journey and the significance of the theme for this year's conference, I want to take a brief moment and share a little bit about my background and why NACHO is my professional association. 
I was born in the Buckeye State in Toledo, Ohio, and spent most of my formative years in the Chicagoland area. I know, I know, we've got some Buckeyes in the house, I understand. <laughs> Even though I went to a different Big Ten school, but we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> my college and graduate experiences occurred in Illinois where I met my wife, who is here with me today along with other members of my family. I'm a first generation Haitian American. My parents immigrated to the US in the 1960s prior to returning to Haiti to practice medicine and nursing respectively. As a result, I had the experience of living on the island for a few years and speak French and Haitian Creole. I'm the eldest of four siblings and was inducted into my high school hall of fame for my academic as well as athletic accomplishments in football and track and field. Unfortunately, an injury derailed my prospects of playing sports at the collegiate level, yet little did I realize that this life-changing experience would set me on this course to serve as a local health official. Prior to my current role at the Cambridge Public Health Department, as you heard, I served as a deputy director at the Office of Health Promotion, the Illinois Department of Public Health, also served as a bureau chief at the Baltimore City Health Department through 9-11, and started my public health career as the director of community affairs on the west side of Chicago at the Sinai Health System. These varied experiences have shaped my lens around the systems that impact the health of populations across race, class, religion, sexual orientation, and disability. When I arrived in Cambridge nearly a decade ago, I was encouraged by mentors and colleagues to become an active member in NACHO. So I joined one of the work groups which focused on leadership and workforce development for new local health officials. The Survive and Thrive program gave me insights about the needs of our evol evolving public health workforce and the competencies needed to succeed as leaders in the health services. I've had the opportunity to represent NACHO on national work groups and advisories. I've presented at this annual meeting and have served on the, as an elected member of the board since 2010. In short, I've taken the advice to heart and it is indeed a great honor to serve as president for the association for the coming term. Also, I think it's important to reflect on the significance of our gathering here this week and the role that NACHO plays as your national membership association. So the unity clap, that you participated in earlier was one activity to help us connect as a body while we're preparing for this shared experience in the coming days. The work of our membership association creates linkages that set the standards of our profession, represent our profession, improve our profession, and safeguard our interests. To be a local health official today is to feel a range of complex emotions about our work, our communities, and our futures together. Conferences such as this one allow us to address health, equity, and security in our communities. NACHO's mission is to be a leader, partner, catalyst, and voice for local health departments in order to ensure the conditions that promote health and equity, combat disease, and improve the quality and length of all lives. As a nation continues to witness an escalation of police violence in communities of color in cities such as Ferguson, Missouri, Cincinnati, Ohio, Baltimore, Maryland, and most recently in Dallas, Texas, Falcon Heights, Minnesota, and Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and the protests that follow, it is imperative that the public health community engages in critical dialogue on its proper role. NACHO has a long-standing policy recognizing intentional injury or violence as a public health issue and calls on local health departments to work to protect and improve community safety in coordination and collaboration with local, state no, uh, local, state, and national partners. NACHO has developed some valuable resources and programs and is leading the public health approach to reducing violence and health inequity in our communities. For example, last July, the Board of Directors adopted a statement of policy on public health racism and police violence in order to support the inherent and valuable work overseen by partners in public safety to protect the health and well-being of local communities. This year's theme of cultivating a culture of health equity could not be more relevant to the issues and challenges that confront us as public health officials. In the next few days, you'll have the opportunity to attend more than 100 sharing sessions, 80 poster presentations, and four plenaries that will focus on reducing and eliminating the root causes of inequity and disparity in the distribution of illness, disease, injury, and death in communities across the country. The sessions that you will be attending have been organized around the following ways that your local health departments are addressing the underlying causes of health inequity and disparity. There are four tracks organized this year's sessions, so let me take a few minutes to highlight each track 
share illustrations of these sessions and the call to action for local health departments. The first track, assess and investigate. In this day and age, local health departments need to assess and interpret information in a timely fashion in order to make evidence-based decisions that meet the needs of our communities. This track will focus on the collection and analysis of data and decision patterns that lead to poor health outcomes or conditions that disproportionately affects a group. NATO encourages local health departments to frame the prevalence of police violence and the threat of violence in all communities as a public health issue associated with a legacy of social, economic, and racial injustice in urgent need of both nationwide and local public health and community result response. As a result, health departments are called upon to be proactive and partner with federal, state, and local law enforcement in order to obtain more complete information about death rates, firearm-related deaths, and overall rates of arrest and violence. Further, health departments are asked to track, analyze, and disseminate accurate data about death rates that measure the health of our communities. The second track, building relationships and alliances. Long gone are the days when health departments could work in isolation and remain in their own regulatory silos. Today, local health departments must make strategic alliances with non-traditional partners and stakeholders that hold the power, influence, and resources to accomplish real change in the reduction of health disparities or inequities. The sessions in this track will focus on how to build a broad public base of support and constituencies that contribute knowledge, connections, and resources to further the cause of improved health and equity for all. To that end, NATO calls on local health departments to build strong relations with local law enforcement, social, social service agencies, and other agencies of government and community-based organizations to end the unjust and discriminatory burden of violence and threat of violence primarily against African Americans as well as people of color more generally. NATO further encourages local health departments to initiate and lead efforts to build strong ties between local government and communities focusing on health equity. The third track, shifting public awareness and consciousness, which calls on local health departments to provide compelling stories, language, and shared understandings that increase awareness, shifts consciousness, and moves public health practice to ensure health and well-being. With this in mind, NATO urges local health departments to explore and communicate how the anticipation and long-term effects of violence and daily intimidation increase toxic stress that severely harms the health of families and whole communities. These factors may be exacerbated by acute episodes that bring to light the issues that impact the quality of life of residents. Our closing plenary on Thursday brings together thought leaders who will examine the long-term impact of policies and practices that have, uh, over time, uh, that have been in place over time, such as hazardous waste, landfills, environmental poisonings, and dispossessions. The final track, Transforming Locals from Within, will focus on strategies to show up on the internal infrastructure that enable local health departments to remain key public health leaders in their communities. Local health departments aim to develop a strong, functional, and effective operational infrastructure that is nimble and viable to carry out this work. So NACHO, through its health equity programs and work groups, seeks to strengthen local health departments' capacity as they confront the root causes of health inequity through principles of social justice and everyday practice beyond mitigating the consequences. So the work around the PBS documentary series, Unnatural Causes, is Inequality Making Us Sick. You remember that was released in 2007? The Raising of America documentary, released last year, and The Roots of Health Inequity, which is a web-based course made available to all of our members. These are just a few examples of NATO's commitment to its members and the products that have been made available to support your work in communities. So this year marks my 10th NATO annual meeting since the first conference that I attended in Columbus, Ohio in 2007. I was impressed by the caliber of the scientific sessions, the genuine spirit of collaboration and networking opportunities, and the space to navigate as a newcomer to the community of local health officers. I applaud the board of directors for taking a stand on public health and the unjustified use of force while recognizing the importance of modernizing our public health practice by upgrading to Public Health 3.0 in order to build the fabric of our shared communities. I encourage you to make the most of your conference experience this week. Try to connect with at least one new person each day and carry the shared learning forward. 
we have a unique opportunity to cultivate a culture of equity by bringing attention to the disproportionate burdens that impact our communities while applying the tools made available through NACHO and our partners. So on behalf of the Board of Directors or the National Association of County and City Health Officials, I look forward to joining you over the course of the week and the season ahead. Your time here will prove to be an invaluable experience, so let's make it a great conference.